Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection on May 12th here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Natalie. And we didn't actually get this done yesterday because we had too many things going on. And so it's actually a Thursday rather than a Wednesday, but that's okay. It actually gives us access to a couple different psalms that we don't ordinarily read. And so typically on the Midweek Connections, we read our lectionary texts. Pray about it, talk about it, and see where the Lord leaves. Uh, leads. Yeah, leads, leads. Yeah, that kind of thing. He might leave, depending on what's going <laughs> <Hopefully> on. <not. laughs> right, hopefully not. Right. Well, anyway, let me open us a word of prayer. Uh, gracious Lord, we thank you for your love for us. Lord, you are a good and a gracious God. And we are grateful that we have the opportunity to read your word and to be transformed by your Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this time and that you would be glorified and that we would be built up in the faith. We thank you and praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. This uh, Today, we are going to start with Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great king over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with the song. God is King over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham, for the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. And Psalm 147, verses 12 through 20. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he strengthens the bars of your gates. He blesses your children within you. He grants peace within your borders. He fills you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters frost like ashes. He hurls down hail like crumbs. Who can stand before his cold? He sends out his word and melts them. He makes his wind blow and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and ordinances to Israel. He has not dealt thus with any other nation. They do not know his ordinances. Praise the Lord. Our Hebrew text today comes from Exodus 34, verses 1 through 17. The Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and I will write on the tablets the words that were on the former tablets which you broke. Be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai, and present yourself there to me on the top of the mountain. No one shall come up with you, and do not let anyone be seen throughout all the mountain, and do not let flocks or herds graze in front of that mountain. So Moses cut two tablets of stone like the former ones, and he rose early in the morning and went up on Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. The Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name, the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, yet by no means clearing the guilty, but visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. And Moses quickly bowed his head toward the earth and worshiped. He said, If now I have found favor in your sight, O Lord, I pray, let the Lord go with us. Although this is a stiff-necked people, pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for your inheritance. He said, I hereby make a covenant. Before all your people, I will perform marvels such as have not been performed in all the earth or in any nation. And all the people among whom you live shall see the work of the Lord, for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Observe what I command you today. 
See, I will drive out before you the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Take care not to make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land to which you are going, or it will become a snare among you. You shall tear down their altars, break their pillars, and cut down their sacred poles. For you shall worship no other god, because the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. You shall not make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land. For when they prostitute themselves to their gods and sacrifice to their gods, someone among them will invite you, and you will eat of the sacrifice. And you will take wives from among their daughters for your sons, and their daughters who prostitute themselves to their gods will make your sons also prostitute themselves to their gods. You shall not make cast idols. Our next reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 13 through 20. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God, that you heard from us and accepted it, not as a human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. For you, brothers and sisters, become imitators of the churches of God in Christ Jesus that are in Judea. For you suffered the same things from your own compatriots as they did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets and drove us out. They displease God and oppose everyone by hindering us from speaking to the Gentiles so that they may be saved. Thus they have constantly been filling, filling up the measure of their sins, but God's wrath has overtaken them at last. As for us, brothers and sisters, when for a short time we were made orphans by being separated from you, in person, not in heart, we longed with great eagerness to see, your face, see you face to face. For we wanted to come to you. Certainly I, Paul, wanted to again and again, but Satan blocked our way. For what is our hope or joy or crown or boasting before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not you? Yes, you are our glory and our joy. Our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 26. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, the judge to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. And our psalm, verse psalm here at the end is Psalm 68. Let God rise up, let his enemies be scattered. Let those who hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melts before the fire, let the wicked perish before God. But let the righteous be joyful. Let them exult before God. Let them be jubilant with joy. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Lift up a song to him who rides upon the clouds. His name is the Lord, the exultant before him. Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. God gives the desolate a home to live in. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. But the rebellious live in a parched land. O oh God, when you went out before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked, the heavens poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. Rain in abundance, O oh God, you showered abroad, you restored your heritage when it languished, your flock found a dwelling in it, in your goodness, O oh God, you provided for the needy. The Lord gives the command, great is the company of those who bore the tidings. The kings of the armies, they flee, they flee. The women at home divide the spoil, though they stay among the sheepfolds. The wings of a dove covered with silver, its pinions with green gold. When the Almighty scattered kings, their snow fell on Zalman. O mighty mountain, mountain of Bashan, 
O many peaked mountain, mountain of Bashan, why do you look with envy? O many peaked mountain, at the mount that God desired for his abode, where the Lord will reside forever. With mighty chariotry, twice ten thousand, thousands upon thousands, the Lord came from Sinai into the holy place. You ascended the high mount, leading captives in your train, and receiving gifts from people, even from those who rebel against the Lord God's abiding there. Blessed be the Lord, who daily bears us up. God is our salvation. Our God is a God of salvation, and to God, the Lord belongs escape from death. But God will shatter the heads of his enemies, the hairy crown of those who walk in their guilty ways. The Lord said, I will bring them back from Bashan. I will bring them back from the depths of the sea, so that you may bathe your feet in blood, so that the tongues of your dogs may have their share from the foe. Your solemn processions are seen, O God, the processions of my God, my King, into the sanctuary. The singers in front, the musicians last, between them girls playing tambourines. Bless God in the great congregation, the Lord, O you who are of Israel's fountain. There is Benjamin, the least of them, in the lead, the princess of Judah in a body, the princess of Zebulun, the princess of Naphtali. Summon your might, O God. Show your strength, O God, as you have done for us before. Because of your temple at Jerusalem, kings bear gifts to you. Rebuke the wild animals that live among the reeds, the herd of bulls with the calves of the peoples. Trample underfoot those who lust after tribute. Scatter the peoples who delight in war. Let bronze be brought from Egypt. Let Ethiopia hasten to stretch out its hands to God. Sing to God, O kingdom of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. O writer in the heavens, the ancient heavens, listen. He sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Ascribe power to the Lord, whose majesty is over Israel and whose power is in the skies. Awesome is God in his sanctuary, the God of Israel. He gives power and strength to his people. Blessed be God. And our final psalm today is Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks far down on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. Well, these are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I know that we haven't done a lot of, uh, we missed last week because I was out of town, um, but the stories that have been going on the daily lectionary through Exodus and the section that we read today from Exodus 34, um, this idea of God uh, telling Moses that he needed to make two new tablets because Moses had gone down and broken those other tablets when he saw the disobedience of the kids. Of the of the children, the kids, the children, <laughs> right? Children, you know, disobedient kids, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, but uh, making new tablets, and it's it's interesting to me that Moses goes back up on the mountain, and obviously he has already been in the presence of God before. God had made for Moses, had made for the people, the, the, the tablets for the Ten Commandments on it. Moses had come down. He saw the people worshiping the golden calf. He gets angry. He smashes the tablets. And God says, hey, come back up. Make new tablets. And then he proclaims his name. And I started thinking, well, wait, hasn't Moses already kind of been around God before? Hasn't God already introduced himself to Moses before? And here we get a different name of God where God reveals himself as the Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Um, I think previously we have seen God reveal to Moses his, his glory 
right. his majesty, his power, his authority, all of those things that got Moses, uh, even in his hesitancy to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let his people go, right. all of those things. And now here, after now the people of Israel have been in rebellion before God, right at the very beginning, right. I set you free from slavery. I brought you out. I've protected you all these things. I've given you water, <laughs> given food, all food. Different kind of food. Different kind of food. And, right. and then they rebel. Right. And this is where I think uh, we as believers, uh, we who have faith in Jesus as the embodiment of God uh, uh, dwelling among us, need to remember that the character of Jesus is the character of God. Right. That Jesus is forgiving because God, the Father, is forgiving. Uh, that that G Jesus shows mercy because God shows mercy, and it's we we are getting um, God in, in God with us. Well, God was with them. Right. He wasn't incarnate in Jesus, but He was present. He reveals Himself as a merciful and a gracious God, slow to anger. It would have been one of those things where again, oh, here's all the stuff I've done for you, here's the rules I want you to obey, and immediately they're already fallen into sin and worshiping the golden calf. Right. Maybe God should choose someone different. Uh, we're gonna snuff you out. You know, you know what? Not good enough, people. <laughs> Not good enough. But God reveals his name his name merciful and gracious slow to anger abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin yet by no means clearing the guilty but visiting the iniquity of the parents upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation um, it's a combination of both holiness and justice and righteousness and glory and majesty and forgiveness. Right. I think sometimes we're so quick to um, to not see God in the day to day, mm -hmm. and we turn to Him in our times of need, or but we don't see Him in the day to day. And in you know, I look at Exodus, and as you read about them, and yes, He delivered them from slavery. God did all of these things, and I mean, part of the Red Sea, they lived that, they saw that, they experienced it. God is with them, communicating with them. They have Moses, who is revealing God's power through the things that he's doing. Um, every morning, they go out and, you know, there's they don't go to the grocery store, they go out and they gather food, and they are being, their very basic needs are being met by God, and yet... They're so quick to say, oh, you know, and turn to the golden calf. And and we and we read it and you know, we kind of ingest, you know, we, he's done this and this and this, and yet they steal. But when we look at our own lives, what is God doing in our lives that we are choosing not to see, are discounting as something else, or accounting it to ourselves and what we're being able to do. And so it's, you know, it's almost comical, their responses. But then you look at us, and are we not doing the same thing? Well, know? I do think we're doing the same thing. Absolutely. Which is, which is why I think here in, in the Matthew 5 passage, it's during the Sermon on the Mount, where, where Jesus is talking to people, well, you heard that it was said, just don't murder. And, and I would certainly hope that most of us can go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Haven't done that. Haven't done right. that. Haven't murdered anybody. That's a, that's a really low bar. Right. That's, right. You know, yeah, that's not a lot of people have going around right, right, doing right, that. Not, right. Yeah, right. Right. But then Jesus uh, elevates the you know raises the standard and basically says, well, 
But if you are angry, you're going to be liable for judgment. If you insult, you're going to be liable to the council. If you say you're, you fool, you're going to be liable to the hell of fire. And, and he goes on to talk about reconciliation. And, and, and here's where um, knowing God's character, and because we know that God is a gracious and a loving and a forgiving and a merciful God, what, and, and he sends Jesus to us, and we are called to be um, increasingly uh, remade, reborn into the image of Christ, well, what do we think that means that we do then? If God is a reconciling God, we need to be about reconciliation. If God is a forgiving God, we need to be about forgiving people. Um, if, uh, I don't think it gets any clearer than that. You know, we are being made into the image of Jesus. We need to be about doing the things that Jesus did. Now, I guess the difficulty and the hard thing is, and we read this in the Thessalonians passage, is there are going to be struggles and conflicts and tensions and 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 uh, unjust actions and oppressions and persecutions and all these things. Um, and, and the spiritual battle that continues to go on, as Paul was saying, we wanted to do this, but we were prevented from doing that. There are still things that are going on in this world that have not quite been set to right. right. But that doesn't excuse us in fact, you know, from Paul's words and from the words of Jesus, it, uh, uh, those difficulties don't excuse us. In fact, they are designed to push us further into that character that God exhibits. Right. And, and with that character, you know, we see God through all of the failures of his chosen people in the Old Testament. And then even in the New Testament, you know, when disciples question things and when, you know, he has a steadfast love. Mm -hmm. He asked Moses to come back and to remake the tablets. It wasn't like, he didn't say, never mind, I'll go find somebody else. Right. He has a steadfast love. Mm -hmm. And uh, when those mistakes are made or when those choices are made, he's still standing right there and he's waiting for us to turn back. Right. And, um, but I think that we can look at that and as you're talking about becoming, you know, imitators of Christ and becoming more Christ-like and becoming people of reconciliation and of grace and of mercy, those are things that we will be hurt mm -hmm. sometimes over and over and over again, mm -hmm. sometimes by the same people. Mm -hmm. But if we are to be imitators, it is not, we don't wash our hands and walk away. We are there as ambassadors. We are there in the world becoming Christ-like. And so we can't just turn our backs. Right. We are called to, to, to love in, in that steadfast love of God. You know, I don't think we get that right. Right. But I think that's definitely something that um, that we need to do better. We need right. to love people better. We, You know, God gave us that example. It's there. And right. so... Mm. I think even in that, uh, we know how much um, how much pain Christ went through. Right. We know that he suffered greatly in order to forgive us of our sins. And I think in a lot of times in our world today, we try to insulate or isolate ourselves from any sort of pain or any sort of suffering. I think this is where you get, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, the greed or the selfishness or the accumulation of things. Like, I want to protect me. I right. want to protect my own, uh, as opposed to um, being willing, um, as you love and as you serve, knowing that that pain is going to come. Right. And Christ did everything, Jesus did everything, knowing that pain was coming, that betrayal was coming, and and he calls us into the same, and it's just like, what a, what a challenge. Um, what an impossibility for us to do through our own strength. And I think, again, this is where uh, Paul reminding the Thessalonians about how the power of Jesus is available to engage in um, ministry that we know ahead of time will have uh, great pain attached to it. But yeah. 
but it's not that the, it's not the pain we're pursuing though it's the it's the joy of of knowing Jesus it's the joy of of, of the new life to come and and it's worth it and and we I think we can only really experience that truly if we if we intentionally engage in it and the, the more we the more we move into ministry that is costly and um, ministry that is frustrating or ministry that is painful the more we move into those things uh, the more the, the closer we draw to Jesus the more we experience his presence in our lives in a very real way the more acquainted we become with his suffering right. the more like him we become and um, and then I think the result of that as we read in multiple psalms today is just praise and praise and yes. praise and praise and praise <laughs> over and over right. again that you know he alone is worthy and um, yeah what what are we holding out for are we looking for a better are we looking for a better option or are we looking to be with God and if God says this is the way to do it then let's then let's do it. Right. Mm -hmm. I think when we get into the those areas, when we go and we do ministry in the world, and we get into um, groups of people that are tough, and there's lots of them, um, I think there's a huge amount of trust too, because so many times we don't get the outcome that we think there should be. Um, but again, that doesn't mean that God is not present in that moment, and it doesn't mean that he's not working in that moment. Right. And so um, it's, I think, sometimes frustrating, as you said, to be in ministry in a world that is broken. In but a church that's broken. In a church that is broken, <laughs> right. In a denomination dealing that's with, broken. Right, dealing right, with right. people. Dealing that with we anybody. All, right. right, we all come to the table with these nuances and these brokenness and these all, you know, we all have our own hurts that we are dealing with, and, and we take and come at that from different aspects. But as we're working in that and with people, I think that we have to trust and recognize that sometimes the outcome that we see, that we don't see, you know, because it hasn't been made right. We don't see the end. We know the promise, but we just have to trust that we are marching towards that promise and be obedient as we're doing that, even when it feels like we're just banging our head against the wall. Right. So. Well, there you go. Always good stuff. Natalie, why don't you close us in prayer today? All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word to us. And um, I pray that we do have your word written on our hearts. I pray that your word does transform us and does challenge us, us and does push us um, as we go into the world. I pray that um, we feel the presence, um, your presence and, and that presence of your steadfast love and that we be uplifted in those moments um, and that we feel that continual presence. Um, I pray that um, you go with us as we go out into the world, and you give us um, you give us hearts of obedience, and that you um, you fill us with your love, that we may become more faithful and more Christ-like. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us, everybody. We're going to get this uploaded as soon as we can, but uh, look forward to hearing any comments from you, and grateful that you joined us. If you do have any prayer requests or concerns, please do let us know. We'll be happy to lift those up in prayer. Look forward to having a chance to worship with you again.